Hi there, this is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video, we're going back to my favourite PI series of all time. It's the Alphabet series written by Sue Grafton. This book is D is for Deadbeat. I love this series so much. I just love everything about it. I love the fact that it's set in the 80s. I love the side characters. I love the main character, Kinsey. I love the way she has to go and manually get clues and information to solve her cases. It's so different from any other PI series that I've read. I think this series is a standout and I do encourage everybody to pick up this series and give it a go if you haven't already. Let's get on with the plot of D is for Deadbeat. At the start of this book, we get the feeling that there's not much going on for Kinsey at the moment work-wise. So when this guy turns up at her office, he looks a bit shady, he's not dressed that well, um, just his whole demeanour is a bit dubious, and his story, his backstory, Kinsey doesn't believe, but he's got a job that's quite easy, or Kinsey thinks it is anyway. He wants Kinsey to find somebody called Tony and hand over a cheque for $25,000. That's all the job is. The backstory to the money is that Kinsey's told it comes from winnings at a track. Kinsey doesn't believe it, she thinks there's something else going on, maybe something criminal, but she wants the easy fee, so she decides to take on the case. She thinks it's easy, find a guy, hand a cheque over, get a fee, done. But as we know in this series, and in Kinsey's life, nothing's easy, and shortly after that visit, she discovers that this guy turns up dead, and she finds out more about this guy as well as she's going along, and she finds out that he was an alcoholic, and he was in an accident, that's why he was in prison, he was in a car accident, and five other people died, and these five people were in the other car. So there's a lot of people who'd want to see him dead. And so that's got Kinsey thinking, what's going on here? The death's ruled accidental by the police, but she thinks it's murder, so she goes about trying to solve this case and prove that it is murder. There's not many clues to go on for Kinsey from the start, so all she can do is kind of track down the other victims in the car crash and try to track down their families and find out what they were doing at the time of the death and were they responsible. So that's what she does. She goes and talks to people, interviews them, and in her usual style, it's more like an interrogation. You know, she's quite bullish with them. She hasn't got the best demeanour when she talks to people, but it gets results. And it seems not to put everybody offside. And as we go along, some of these suspects are quite interesting in themselves. Some of them are a bit eccentric. Some of them have things to hide. Some of them are a bit playful. They're all different types of people. They're both men and women, all different ages as well. So it's very interesting, this case, as Kinsey goes along. Unfortunately, in this book, we don't see anything of Henry. And I love Henry in these books. And Rosie, we only see Rosie for about one page. That's a shame because both Henry and Rosie are standout characters to me. And if they're not in the book in a big way, it just makes the book not as interesting for me as well. The pace of this book isn't as good as the pace from books A to C. And that made this not as enjoyable to read. The subject matter of this book is a bit darker than A to C as well. That didn't have a negative impact for me, but just as a warning to some readers, we have alcoholism, we have spousal abuse, and we also have another dark subject that I won't mention because it's a big plot element, a big twist at the end. But just as a warning to some readers, you might find this a bit of a challenging read because of those dark moments. One of the highlights of this book, though, is just the various suspects we have. They're just so interesting. I mean, all of them are interesting because they're all so different. And they all bring something to the book. I'll mention two of them in the section on characters. But for me, they're all standouts. And they're the best cast of suspects that I've read in this series so far. From A to D anyway. The last thing I'll mention about this plot, and it's an ongoing storyline in the series so far, is that Joan is back in the plot. But his home situation is more complex. So his wife's back, and his wife had left him in previous book. But she's now back, and she wants an open marriage. Kinsey is still interested in Jonah. And in this book, they finally hook up. You know, they finally get it on. But we don't really get to see anything investigated after the fact. We don't see how they both feel about that. 
It's difficult in a series that has many books to focus on big characters in each section like this, because the major characters don't change that much. They stay pretty stable throughout the series. There may be some character growth, but it's not big enough to mention in a section like this. So for this video, I'll talk about two of the suspects in this book. The first one I want to talk about is Billy. Now, Billy is a special character. He's quite endearing. He's quite engaging. He was an ex-con, and he knew the murder victim in prison. But what makes him so endearing is that even though he's in his 20s, he thinks he's so clever. He thinks he's a bad boy, and he thinks he... It's got that, you know, bad boy image going on, that bad boy vibe going on. Kinsey sees through that, and what she sees is uh, a guy who is still a bit gentle, a bit um, naive in some ways, and maybe he still hasn't grown up emotionally properly. So she sees all that in Billy, and you get the feeling that Kinsey really likes Billy as a person in this book. Tony is a teenage boy in this book, and when he was younger... The rest of his family died in that car accident. And Tony is the person that Kinsey was trying to track down to hand the check over to. That event, that car accident, is the thing that forms Tony's character now the most. And he's very scarred by it. He's seeing a therapist. He's trying to work through that still. So he still has a lot of anger. He gets migraines a lot because of it. He has nightmares. All this sort of stuff goes on with him. And... When Kinsey meets him, you just see that Kinsey feels so sorry for him. Kinsey sees all this turmoil in Tony, and she relates in a way because when Kinsey was younger, in the past of this character, Kinsey's own parents died in an accident. So you get the sense that Kinsey understands what Tony's going through, and that's quite special in this book because you see a bit of a motherly instinct in Kinsey, even though she doesn't want to be a mother, she doesn't like children per se, you get the impression that she wants to look after Tony in some way, that she cares for him, and I thought that was quite special. Even though this book isn't the strongest in the series, in my opinion, I still rate it a 4 out of 5, and that's because of the characters. So even though we don't get Rosie and we don't get Henry, we'll have Kinsey of course, because she's the main character. But those suspects are so special in this book. And also the book takes us into a different territory, a bit of a darker territory that we hadn't seen before. But it's the suspects, I think, in this case that make it special because they're so varied and they all have something special, something to give to the reader in this book. That's why I like this book so much. I have read books A to C and they're on my channel already. Check them out and while you're there, why not subscribe? I'll also review the other books in this series as I reread each one. Be sure to look out for those as well. If you like mystery books and crime novels, check out the Crime Mystery playlist on my channel. It should be on your screen now.